Daisy. and Toby had to take them away and spend half the night soothing their hurt feelings. The engines woke next morning feeling exhausted. Daisy, on the other hand, felt bright and cheerful. She tuned as she came out of the yard and back to the station. Look at me, she purred to the passenger. I'm the latest diesel, highly sprung and right up to date. You won't want Thomas's bumpy old Annie and Clarabelle now. The passengers waited for Daisy to start, but she didn't. She saw that a milk van was about to be coupled to her and was most indignant. Do they expect me to pull that? Surely, said her driver, you can pull one van. I won't, said Daisy. Percy can do it. He loves messing about with freight cars. She began to shudder violently. Nonsense, said her driver. Come on now, back down. Daisy lurched back. She was so cross that she blew a fuse. Told you, he said, and stopped. Everyone argued with her, but it was no use. It's Fitter's order, she said. What? My Fitter's a very nice man. He comes every week and examines me carefully. Daisy, he says, never, never pull. You're highly sprung, and pulling is bad for your spurs. So that's how it is, finished Daisy. Stop and nonsense, said the station master. I can't understand, said the shunter. Whatever made Sir Topham Hatt send us such a feeble... Feeble? Feeble? Fluttered Daisy. Let me... Stop arguing, grumbled the passengers. We're late already. So they uncoupled the van, and Daisy purred away, feeling very pleased with herself. She could now enjoy her journey. That's a good story, she chuckled. I'll do just what work I choose and no more. But she said it to herself. 